okay with this video i will be starting a new playlist on uh, deep learning okay as you have seen in my channel i have another playlist on machine learning so for deep learning i will be creating a separate playlist and both of this playlist i will be working on separately or uh, even parallelly as well okay some of the videos i'll be posting for the machine learning and and deep learning as well because in recent years deep learning has gained tremendous popularities and there are valid reasons like why it ha it has got this much of popularity and, and 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 if you see in big companies they are investing millions of dollars on on deep learning research and and lot of companies are implementing deep learning in in their day to day scenarios okay so we will try to get an idea in this video what deep learning is very very short way okay from the from the next video onwards we will try to deep dive into more more technical stuff related to deep learning okay now the first question arrived like where this this particular deep learning fits in this in this machine learning world right so if i if i just do a study on on artificial intelligence okay machine learning is a part of artificial intelligence study okay there are there are lot of other related fields even like artificial intelligence has applications in various kinds of fields like like in 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 medical field or education farming everywhere there can be a implementation of artificial intelligence but one of the biggest part of artificial intelligence is the machine learning now deep learning is a part of machine learning okay so that means what about the base theories or base basic concept of machine learning we know that is also applicable to the deep learning as well but in deep learning we do stuff in separate way which we will be seeing very shortly okay now now if i if i just do a comparative study with the traditional programming language and machine learning and deep learning some of it we have seen in our in our machine learning playlist video videos as well right so in traditional programming what happens like we have data and we have certain kind of rules right so let's say you are writing a program in python or or c right so what do you do you basically define certain kind of rules right if this happens then this this portion of the code will run or or else some other portion of the code will run right and and those programs runs on the data right so and what they do they produce they produce an output over there right now in machine learning the approach is little bit different followed because this is where we are basically coming out of the traditional programming way of writing each and every conditions so over there possibly happen because in traditional programming we we just do the same stuff right we create rules and we create outputs based on the data right now this is not possible when we talk about different kinds of real world scenarios just like if you want to classify a particular picture using a computer vision you cannot write each and every possible scenarios over there right so in those cases machine learning comes into very handy so over there what we do we still have our data but over here we produce or we provide basically the labeled data or the answers as well okay which we called nothing but the training data then we pass it to the machine learning models or whatever it is or machine learning process which basically creates a model and it it basically creates a rule right so this this is the machine learning algorithm part over here right so over here if you see the basic difference is the machine learning creates a rule in comparison to the traditional programming languages right now in deep learning the similar concept is there we have still data we have our labeled our answers so this is we are talking about in terms of supervised way of handling the data right or basically doing the machine learning stuff and here the main difference of deep learning and machine learning is in deep learning these two things are going through the layer by layer okay just like we have neurons in our in our brain right so whatever activities we do it send a, it sends a signal to our brain right and how it sends it's the that particular signal suppose you are you are touching something some surface right so that particular signal has to go to your brain so that you you will understand what you have touched over there right so and that's sending that signal or processing that signal happens through the neurons right 
So similar kind of concept over here. It the, the, the data basically went through a lot of layers and then finally it produced the rules by which we can basically do some kind of prediction on the on the on the unknown data, right? Now if, as you have seen the, over here, like the deep learning is actually draw its idea from from the human brain structure or the neuron structure basically. But it it, it does not represent the actual working way of brain. It just like draw that idea from there. That's all. Okay. We will see in very detail like how this layering approach works and uh, and what are the things we have to know to uh, to basically implement a deep learning model over there. Okay. So there are certain kind of maths as well which we will be covering along the way. Okay. And also we will be mainly using two kinds of library over there. One will be TensorFlow. Another will be Keras. Okay. And maybe in future, if time permits, so I will try to create contents on other other deep learning frameworks as well. But initially, we will be mainly concentrating on on that Google TensorFlow and and Keras. Okay, and and the one thing like the question arises like if deep learning works in similar way or not in similar way, almost the same way, right? We have a data and the label data are answered. It creates rules. So then why we need to have or why deep learning was developed. So one of the reason behind the deep learning was developed is the performance. Okay. So if you see in the in, in, in our modern world, we have so much digital data available, right? And, and previously, like few few decades back, it was almost like all the data we were we were representing on that relational database, right? So it was a structured data. But nowadays, whatever the most of the data you are this this world is producing is most of the are in unstructured in nature. So that's why this machine learning and deep learning stuff is coming into picture. But when the data volume is huge, the, in those cases the traditional machine learning algorithm does not work the performance of the traditional machine learning algorithm is not that much compared to the deep learning. So that is why maybe the, this deep learning has been developed over here. And if you see, like, you can represent this behavior in a graph as well. And if you see when the data amount of data is lower, so there are there are ways like, and there can be proof that the traditional machine learning algorithm can outperform deep learning as well. And if you see, like, in, in Kaggle, there is one very famous algorithm called gradient boosting or exibust so that that actually won lot of kaggle competitions right but when the amount of data is much much higher in those cases deep learning will be very much handy over there because you can do the you can use basically the gpu as well for for the for training models and stuff right so we'll switch which we'll see in in future videos as well and in terms of applications or okay there is another thing which we want to understand like why deep learning is also famous is called feature engineering like in in machine learning in traditional machine learning approaches based on certain domain you may need to create own features which i still not discussed in my channel maybe in i will be covering feature engineering very soon in the machine learning playlist so over there, what you need to do is basically based on the available features, you will be creating new features, which will be much more useful for the models. Okay. Now in deep learning, these things has been fully automated and, and taken care of. So that is another reason why deep learning has been developed. And, and in terms of application, as I told deep learning is currently setting the trend. It has a lot of useful applications like safe driving cars, natural language processing, natural language understanding, which is which you can see in Alexa or, or Google Home, image classification, speech recognition, handwritten digit recognition. This this particular problem actually called the hello world problem of deep learning, which we will be covering as well. And and the fraud detection. So this just this is not the exhausted list. This is some of the biggest applications of deep learning as well. Okay. So from the next video onwards, what we will try to see is we'll first try to learn the mathematical background needs to be understood for the deep learning. We will not will I'll try to be as much as simple as possible. Okay. Then we will try to see how we can implement neural network and other stuff. As well okay so hopefully this short introduction was helpful see you in next video